Uh, welcome to Rick Grayson, uh, Rick's Corner, and I'm going to have Greg Valentino on today again because I like this guy a lot. He's smart, he's up front, he tells it like it is, and he's old school like I am. So I have a few things I want to talk to Greg about, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy this, as we always do. Greg, you're a great guy. There's no question about Thank it. You. A lot of people really speak very highly of you, including myself, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you, as you know. So, Thank you, Greg. Yeah, and you look awesome. Those shoulders are like two yards wide. Oh, yeah, they're still out there. <laughs> I, I wish mine would get out. i got such frozen shoulders in my joints, and I work them, but they don't respond like I did when I was 20. You know, being 26 now, it's kind of hard on me. Do you still do high volume? Like, remember no. the old school, like three times a week, each body part, that kind of thing? I do each body part twice week? a week, um, and sometimes once. I go in and I go by instinct. If I feel like doing right. shoulders today, I'll do them tomorrow. I'll do chest or I'll do back. And just sometimes I'll group two together. It just depends on how I feel. You know, at my age now, I don't want to kill myself. And I do train hard for my age, but uh, afterwards I get kind of tired. It just works. I hear you. It, it, as you get older, you got to morph, you know. you got to yes. change with the times. It's definitely yeah. not the same. It's not the same. You need that recovery time for sure. Did you go right. to the Olympia? Uh, no, uh, I did. I, I actually had ticket. I, you know, I, I had a full ride to the Olympia, but I didn't feel like going. I'm so burnt out with all that stuff. Plus, I, I had some stuff to take care of here first. Okay. So I, I <clears> sat <throat> it out. When's the last time you've been to a contest? I'm gonna see if you're like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the last time Steve Blackman paid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I go down to the beach once in a while, but it's not to see the contest. It's to see the friends that are hanging around. I mean, I don't care who wins or loses. They all look the same to me anyway, and I've been there so many times like you. It's just not interesting to me anymore. I don't care. No, nah, it's not the same, Rick. Rick, i got to be honest with you. I could watch videos of these guys today, right? Yeah. And, you know, you see all well, they're bigger, grainier, harder, veiny and everything. Yeah. But then when I watch Pumping Iron, I still get a lot more motivated yeah. because I guess maybe, the you know, that old Greg in me, you know, when I was younger – uh, I mean, kicks in. It's it's just it's not the same. Bodybuilding to me now is a lifestyle. I don't care about the sport of it. I care about the lifestyles, the way we live our lives. Forget about. It. I don't care who wins the Olympia uh, or any of that stuff. And and the, and the physiques are so incredibly different today. Yeah, let me it, ask it, you about you know. that. Phil Heath won. There was another guy. Was it Big Rami or something next to him? Yeah, Big Rami. Yep. Now they both look great. And I can't tell one from the other. What can distinguish the winner to the other one? I I don't really understand this anymore. Because they both look great. Well, yeah, you know what it is? First of all, Phil Heath's a champion, right? Yeah. So to beat the champion, you have to knock him out, just like in boxing. I and mean, if it's close, it's always going to go to the champion. Right. Uh, plus, uh, I mean, Big Ramy was in better condition. He was way better. I felt like he was harder, grainier, you know, more veiny. Phil Heath came in with a little bit of a gut. And as a matter of fact, he freaked out. After the show on that kid, Louis Marco, who, uh, you know, was talking about Phil having the gut, you know, like uh, on the Internet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I feel like, dude, if, you know, you had to, if, if, when you're in the public eye. Yeah. OK, you better get ready to have some, you know, criticism. If you can't take it, you got to thicken your skin. He went off on a tirade that was like ridiculous on this guy. Oh, I didn't know and, that. Yeah. Oh, it's, you got to see it. It's, it's, it's like crazy. But um, Big Ramy, his biggest problem is from behind. He needs more density in his back, more hamstrings, and he has no calves compared to like Tom Platt's see, like yeah. thighs. You know what I mean? So, you know, but I mean, you know, but his, his condition was great. Yeah. You and I should be so lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, right? I, dude, let me tell you something. I look like uh, six pounds of shit and a three-pound back. You know? <laughs> you know, I always go back to people stop me all the time now that my show's got even more and more. But people on the street, just regular people. Oh, I watch your show and I love it. And then people will talk to me for a minute and I'll say, I have not They say, oh, yeah, I know. I watch it all the time. But they're afraid to bring it up until I bring it up. And, oh, you're in great shape and, you know, this and this and this and this. And, you know, I'm 73 now and I'm staying in as good a shape as I can. But I'm not 35. I'm never going to be again. And you look great. You look great for your age. You've got to be kidding me. How many people your age look as good as you? Jane Fonda. No way. Jane Fonda. <laughs> yeah. Well, she has plastic surgery. You this know, is you, true. You, but work, yeah, you earn your, your physique, you know. You earn your, your body. It's you still hard, though, friend. Greg. It's still hard. You know, you go to the gym and you train as hard as you can. I can't do the heavy weights anymore, so I don't. Uh, the 65-pound doubles I used to do, I used the 20s. And 20s are heavy sometimes. Sometimes they're not. And I think, what happened overnight, you know? But it wasn't overnight. It was 20 years later. Well, you know what it is, Rich? Rick, listen. If you watch 
baseball, for instance, okay? Yeah. And you watch a guy like CC Sabathia for the Yankees, because, you know, I'm a New York guy, Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Yankees. So you watch a guy like CC Sabathia, who had an incredible fastball. He had to reinvent himself now and throw, like, learn, you know, a, a breaking ball. You know, like, he, he, he throws different pitches. He's now a quality pitcher because he can't throw fastballs anymore right. because his arm, he's older. So that's basically what bodybuilding is the same thing. You have to learn to adapt. Your body's talking to you. So you got to listen. What's your body telling you? Yeah. You can't train like you did when you were 21. All these kids, Dorian Yates even said it, all these kids today that are 21 and think like, yeah, I'm going to get jacked. I'm going to be like, you're not going to be like that forever. No. It's not happening. I mean, it, it's, it's just not happening. You know? Well, it's not. So, and, and people say, oh, man, what did you weigh back in those days? I said probably about two pounds within uh, right now. Maybe 213, I'm 216 now. So the weight didn't change. The body shape changes a little bit. And, of course, you're not as cut. And I've had my share of injuries and torn tendons and that. But um, it's just difficult because, I mean, I can accept it. I'm okay with it. But you still look and you say, why can't I stay that sharp as I was? My diet's still pretty much the same. You know, I have a couple of treats here and there, but not really. And it just doesn't get you where you were before. You know, it just doesn't do it. More so women. I see women can gain 30 pounds in a month. They train down to nothing, and then they gain 30 pounds back real quick. Oh, yeah. And, well, estrogen will do that to you, too. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Their whole composition is different. But, you know, as we get older, I mean, uh, it, it, it becomes it, it does become harder, but you have to adapt with that. You have to cha – everything changes. Look at society today, you know, with the, you know, the Internet, you know, social media and all this stuff. More people go on YouTube now and watch YouTube than watch television. You know, yeah. it just everything has changed. Music has changed. I mean, even CDs. I bought CDs for how many years? I got all these CDs, uh, eight tracks, cassettes, you know, records. Know. And now they're obsolete. You know what I mean? And now you get a little, uh, you know, MP3 on your on your thing, and that plays. You don't even need to stock up all these. You know, you know what I mean? All yeah. these CDs are. Well, so it, it's funny you say. I, I have a record player. My dad left me. It has the horn on it. And it has the cylinder records. That you put on, it goes across, and oh. like classic, classic records, and then old, old, old records from the twenties and big cases. But I'm sure they're worth something somewhere, but I don't have anything to play them on anymore. You know, it's, it is what it is. Oh, absolutely. But that's that's cool stuff. See, I like that. I still have all that stuff, but I got closets full of <laughs> yeah. you know records and everything. You gotta, I gotta get rid of it. You know, yeah, I don't know where to get, it, but I don't want to get rid of it because it was his. You know, you, you hold on to stuff. Well, I wouldn't get rid of that though. No, that I would never get rid of. No. But I mean, the records I have, I'm talking. About, yeah, that I wouldn't get rid of. Right. Now, I have another question. Uh, without naming names, because I don't want to get into people's personal lives and stuff, we've had friends recently that have died uh, more than more than should be at young yeah. age and at older ages and at all ages that are all bodybuilders. And uh, it, it really saddens me quite a bit that this thing happened and these things do happen. And everybody's first to say, oh, it was steroids, it was steroids, it was steroids. Police come to a house, they find a guy passed out and they find steroids. It was steroids, but then again, it's not. It's whatever else he was doing outside of that. You know that. But they're always, right. quick, they're always quick to blame that. And I don't think that's to blame. I think any recreational drugs that come beyond that, pain pills, alcohol, which uh, a lot of the wrestlers have done because of injuries, is the culprit. However, it doesn't seem to stop anybody from taking all the crap and, and getting 300 pounds. And they should notice that you know that even just 300 pounds off drugs is hard on your heart. Just fat people alone have heart attacks because their weight's so demanding on their heart, you know? Well, you know what's funny? I, I got a few things to say about that. First of all, a fat person, believe it or not, has it easier than a, a body than a person with all muscle. A 300 pound fat guy could probably live longer than a 300 pound muscle guy. And uh, the reason why is fat doesn't call the amount of blood that muscle does. Oh, that's right. that's true. That's true. And there's not as much blood flow to fat mm -hmm. as there is to muscle. So actually, carrying that kind of muscle is harder on your body than if it was fat. Now, fat gets around the organs and stuff like that, right. yes. But the other thing what people don't understand is is that steroids work in a different way. They, they're not the direct cause, but they do aid in, in a lot of these problems. Why is it always kidneys, heart, and liver that right. somebody dies from in our sport? And the reason why is because when you take massive amounts of steroids, listen, over here, I just said this in another interview, but I'm going to say it here too. I remember when the game Wii came out, and in New York, they had a radio station was giving away free Wii games. Remember? There was like this big, people were going nuts trying to get this game. You couldn't even get it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
They had they had a contest. Whoever can drink the most water would win. Oh yeah. And the woman went on there and she drank like I don't know two three gallons of water yep. and died yep. in the studio. I sure remember okay. that. So anything in excess. A little bit of steroids, a little bit of testosterone, and everything is okay. But when you start, you know, uh, you know, we don't take a little bit. See, the no. problem with the bodybuilder too is that they take a chemical for every little thing. I need need something to go to bed. I need something to wake me up. I need something to. I need something that's going to burn fat. I need something that's going to give me energy. Yeah. I need something that's going to make me bigger. I need something that's going to make me harder. I need something that's going to make me lose water. I need something to stop cortisone. I need something to stop estrogen. Oh, shit. Holy shit! <laughs> you see all the things? Yeah. So all of that collected together creates. An atom bomb inside you. It's yeah. a possible time bomb. It slowly does damage. Now, taking steroids enlarges the heart. It's also very hard on the liver, which also sends messages to the kidneys. Yeah. You know, are you drinking enough water? Blah, blah, blah. So what, what happens is, is that all these guys seem to die of the same thing. Dallas McCarver was only 26 years right. old. He did not die of old age. And if I, I believe... That if he wasn't a bodybuilder and you know if he was a you know normal guy, he probably would still be alive today. So I do believe that it all it has a, a part in all of this. You, you know, know what they base his death on, right? I mean, these guys. If you, you know, Rick, you've been around. And plus, let me tell you some another thing about bodybuilders. I've been around these guys a long time, and these guys also like to party. So let's throw some party drugs on top of that whole other list. That I gave you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've got anxiety. So let me take something for anxiety. I want to go to the club. Let me look, do something to make me a little happier, you know, yeah. in the club. And yeah. A little ecstasy. Maybe something to get, so I can get a heart on with my girlfriend because my yeah. dick's on. So now you think about So now, now we're, we're up to like 10, 15 different things. Oh, and my God. Yeah. It, it just, you know, it's like Elvis Presley. You know what I mean? He, you know, he, he took a drug to make himself, you know, get up. Then he took a drug to go to bed. He took a drug to, you know, to deal with anxiety. He took a drug. Before you know it, you're mixing a cocktail of disaster and bodybuilders were chemical uh, warriors we want to do things to, you know every give me something what can i do for this what can i do what can i take what you know yeah. and that's what happens well, and a massive something. amount of food doesn't help in, in all my years of training i never did much more than test and maybe a little equipoise not even a lot and then over the years I, i've never smoked grass i've never taken street drugs and i hardly ever drink alcohol i have a beer once in a while and I'm not saying that I'm any saint, that's not for sure, but, but at 73, I feel good. And my cardiologist said, you need to take a little testosterone a week, that like 250 milligrams a week. It's good for you. Yours, you want to keep yours high, and it won't hurt your heart. It will help your heart. And he's a very good cardiologist in Beverly Hills. So I do stay on it. It does keep me in better shape. There's no question about it. Oh, I, I, I don't, listen, yeah. you just said exactly what you're taking 200 milligrams of test is one thing. Taking two, three, four, five thousand milligrams of test, and that's nothing. I mean, you know, then you throw in all the other stuff that's in there too. You know, all the other anabolics. You know, you now it's a different story. And it goes back to the drinking water thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having a couple of glasses of water is not going to kill nobody. But you know, this woman drank three gallons. You know, and she died right there in the studio trying to win a wee game, which she actually won for her children. You know, what I mean? it's a, you know. What I'm saying is, I think it's the same thing with steroids. Yeah, dude, I, I know I did like six thousand milligrams. I went to jail. I went from taking six thousand milligrams to going to jail. So you can imagine how I felt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and and I was, and that's nothing. I was throwing in bottles of Equipoise. I mean, I was nuts. You know, you're talking in two thousand. This is a long time ago. Yeah. But still, I was nuts. Did you, you know? notice I, that I much muscle gain from all that? I gained a hundred pounds. Yeah, I heard somebody else gain 100 pounds doing that. And then you lose it right, right away. I mean, you can't hold it forever. And oh, yeah. You, no, you know what's funny? I had so much shit in me, Rick. I swear to God, it took two years because the shit was sitting in me. You know what I mean? The oil and everything from the from the steroids. Everybody thinks it's simple. I didn't do it. I took the testosterone and all that stuff. I took it right into muscle. Yeah. And I swear to God, it was like time-release juice. You know what I mean? I took so <laughs> much of it. It sat in me like, you know, in like pools and dissipated over a year, you know. Over like two, three years. I mean, I slowly, you know, shrunk. Well, you haven't shrunk. You look good. How old are you now? Um, I'm going to be 58. You look great. Thank you. Look you look good. Your face looks good. You got no wrinkles. You got those sexy glasses on. You know what I mean? Thank you. Well, I keep the glasses because of my eyes. I don't know. Uh, like if you Did I show you last time or no? I have an eye injury. I don't know if you can see my eyes at all. But Oh, no, I can't I really can... tell. Oh, okay. Well, what it is is I have two different, looks like I have two different colored eyes. And the light, because there's a lot of light over this way, you know, I'm, I'm in a big room with glass, with windows and everything. Yeah. And a lot of light, um, it, it, my pupil is permanently dilated. I see. So 
it's paralyzed, open. So it looks like I got a giant fish eyeball <laughs> and, a, and a regular eyeball. So the light, you know, your your pupil shrinks. Mine don't shrink. I understand so that. That's why I, wear, I don't wear the sunglasses because I think I'm cool because I can't see. Oh, no, see. no, they look, I'm, not, I'm just kidding with you. I, there was a time in my life where I used to get all my contacts free, so I'd wear one blue and one green. Then I had a red one. I had purple. I had all these different colors just to screw with people. But it was fun. <laughs> And then if you wear glasses, say, what's wrong with your eyes? I said, it's crossed. It keeps looking at that one, so I don't want people to see it. <laughs> but but now that you, now that you're this age, and you do look good, uh, Thank you. you've you've cut way down on everything, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't look like everybody. Still thinks I look like I. I have people still come up to me. How's your arm doing? Are you are you doing good? I'm like, dude, that was 2000. Do you know how long ago that was? Yeah. That was a long time ago. The pictures and video footage you see of me, it was 40 years old. If you watch the arrest footage, you'll see it says 40 year old Greg Valentino. I mean, that was, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, that was almost 18 years ago. You know so, what I'm saying? So you think you'd mellow it out quite a bit now? Oh, yeah. I'm hyper naturally. I'm nutty, you know, because that's just me. I don't like you, Rick. I've never ever tasted. I'm Italian. I've never tasted wine. I've never. I've never drank a beer in my life. I've never drank coffee. I never drank tea. I have taken caffeine, lots of it. I'm not on it now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not on it now. I'm just shaking like mad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I'm just. I'm, na I'm one of those naturally hyper guys. Yeah. I never. Um, I've never uh, uh, smoked pot. Never smoked cigarettes. And ne never in my, in my life. It doesn't interest you me. Know? I'd rather eat good and train hard. You know, enjoy me life. Me too. It has nothing to do with bodybuilding, though, for me. It had to do with me idolizing my father growing yeah. up, and he didn't, he didn't, you know, do any of that stuff either, you know. So I was like, oh, you know. Like, well, that's I, I get that. My father died when I was eighteen. He's the one who introduced me to wrestling, taking me to shows once a week in Bakersfield. He never knew I was going to go that route. He saw me working out, but he missed out on my whole life. And I wished he would have been there. I could have shared wrestling and all my adventures with him because it would have been fun. However, my mom lived till ninety-seven. And she God had my bless back. her. Yeah, she was awesome. She had my back on everything. I used to practice my moves on her. For her, I knew I was doing too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I would sign up for 97 any day of the week, but God yeah. bless mom. That, yeah. That's awesome. So how, how many days a week are you training now? I train uh, pretty much five days a week. I take I, I don't like to work out on weekends, you know. Yeah. But I train each body part once. But I do a lot of sets. I still do really high volume, but I do it in a small – like. I cut down my rest periods. I'll rest you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Sure. depends on the, 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 the exercise. Sure. But I'll still do like 50, 60 sets. I'm nuts. And I'm not even on TRT right now because my benefits won't pay for it. Yeah. And I'm not going to buy that shit off the street. No. I was on TRT, but it's been about a year. So, I want. I mean, I'm trying to get back. My, my doctor writes me the prescription, but my benefits are like, you know, we're not paying for that. So when I go to try to get this, you know, to go to the pharmacy, they want like $250 for a bottle of test. I'm like, dude, I used to sell this shit on the street. I was getting it for eight bucks. What are you crazy? Oh, my insurance, you know I mean? my insurance covers that. Medicare. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, uh, see? That's good, though. See, I'm not quite there yet. No, but no. I, I want. Yeah, my right, the doctor writes me a script. The Medicare covers it. And my pharmacy knows me, so they take care of me. But I'm not, I don't it, see anything against it at my age. I mean, I should be able to take something. No, no, no. I believe in that stuff. I believe that that's the fountain of youth is to keep your hormones at least tolerable. You don't, you don't need all like, you know, you know, thousand milligrams or any of that stuff. Not when you're our age. We've got to start worrying about heart and other organs. Exactly. You know, when you're 21 years old, I could have jumped off a building, hit my head and got up and wiped myself off and then went to the gym. You know, it didn't affect me. Right. But today... Getting out of bed, you're like, holy shit, I was fine when I went to bed. How come I can't walk right now? Why are my knees killing me? Yeah, Why what's the back? deal with that? I wake up some mornings and I feel great. I wake up in the mornings and I feel like I've been hit by an 18-wheeler. And I didn't change anything at night. It's like somebody came and <laughs> beat me up in my sleep. I don't understand that. I don't know if it's the position we sleep in or, or what it is. But, you know, that's what people don't realize. When you're young, you, you know, some of these guys watching this, the older guys that watch this, they relate. You know, you go to bed, you feel good, you get up in the morning, you're like, son of a bitch, how come my back is really, what, yeah. what I do? I, I, didn't, I was sleeping, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, my back is... <laughs> do you wake, up, you wake up more tired than when you go to sleep sometimes? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, an, that's another thing. That's why I stopped taking caffeine and everything, because, you know, I, I, I was getting to the point where I was addicted to it, you know? I could take three or four caffeine pills, 200 milligrams, that's like 800 milligrams of caffeine, and 15 minutes later, I'm tired again, you know? Yeah. That, that's a clear sign of addiction. So and, I, and I tell a story, Rick, real fast. I tell a story. I was taking so much pre-workout. This is a story I've, I've told in a generation iron and, and everything. But I, I went to a funeral. My friend died. And I went over there. It was like really hot. 
and I was crying on his, you know, like I was hugging him and crying. He was, you know, in a coffin and everything. And, you know, you cry, you snot a little bit and everything. And uh, when I walked away, I looked and everybody was horrified. And I, I turned, I looked back at the coffin, and my friend has got blood all over his face and it's all over the coffin because I had a bloody nose. Oh, and God. I didn't even know. <laughs> and I bled all over his face. I mean, he was he looked like Carrie, like in a movie, Carrie. He looked like, I didn't notice because I was crying. And then I, I couldn't stop the bloody nose. It was insane. That's it's because crazy. I was taking pre-workout, you know, like three, four scoops, you know, and then and, and I was nuts. That's so I had to stop. the funniest thing I've ever heard. That's got to be the funniest thing I've ever heard. Dude, you had to see it. And you know what's worse? The, 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 they gave his mother Windex, and she was spraying it. You know, like they didn't know what to do. They were trying to clean it off his face. His father said, "Just leave it. It's symbolic." Because they were about to close the casket anyway, and we were best friends, like brothers. You know. That's hilarious. But I mean, he was spraying Windex on his face with it, with paper towel, trying to get it off. Oh my God! I, wait till no, Rick. I mean, I, bl I bled <laughs> all over. I was all over the casket, all over every. I mean, I drenched him. I didn't know it. This is crazy. Um, what have you got going right now? What are you doing? As far as oh, uh, uh, you know, I'm doing it. You know, the Generation Iron. I just did that. I like I did them. 14 episodes. I like that and, company. Yeah, they're good. I like them too. There's yeah. some people talk shit about them, but you know, no, they, 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 they do a nice they job on interviews. Christ. They do a very nice job on interviews. Oh, um, they're great, and yeah. and they, they've been very good to me, Rick. Yeah. This is my third season. It's three years. I've done fourteen shows. You know, with, with Generation I. Plus, I'm working with Muscular Development Magazine again. I was there for fifteen years. Then went to Muscle Sport Mag for three, and now I'm back with you know Muscular Development. So I'm back with them. Um, you know, I, I got a bunch of whole, you know a lot of little <clears> things. I'm I'm just a dog chasing his tail. You know what I mean? No, we all do that. We all do that. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you. I ran out of my time limit on my thing. And I I'm want, sorry. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Uh, and we'll do more at some point. Is that okay? Absolutely. Anytime you want me, you let me know, and I'll talk to you. you I don't shut up, so. No, that's what I like about it. Don't forget me if something comes up and you need me too. Absolutely, absolutely, Rick. Absolutely. All I right, got you Greg, on. You're an awesome guy. I love you. I think you're just awesome. You Seriously. Too. And I love you too, Rick. Thank you, man. Please stay in touch with me. Absolutely. Same here. Okay. Thank you guys for watching Greg's Corner. Greg Valentino, he's number one on my list. I love this guy. You're just so awesome. It's unbelievable. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Rick Drayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.